Um, I guess what I can get into now is kind of thinking about these assets, what the best assets are to hold and carry value in your dynasty roster, especially in the off season as we're in now. So I've talked about elite quarterbacks, but I actually think the best place to carry value at basically any time, but especially in the off season where, you know, there's news all the time, something could come out, injury could happen. Anything can happen to any given player that causes their dynasty value to diminish somewhat. Obviously some are more safe than others, um, more, um, yeah, safeguarded than others in terms of their dynasty value. But the only thing that really doesn't have that kind of news-based variants are uh, future picks. So first round picks in particular. Uh, second round picks, uh, it varies league to league. They're basically good currency in season to acquire production. That's their best use in my mind is good currency for acquiring production in season. But first round picks are a terrific spot to park your dynasty value. And uh, I do want to get on my soapbox a little bit for picks that are two years out. So, you know, we obviously have the 2024 first round picks that are next year, but the 2025 first round picks for the year following, these are picks that are oftentimes in my mind criminally undervalued, especially on these stack teams where you're looking you're looking at this roster, you're thinking, I have a lot of value. I have excess value. I don't need this value to contend this year to put myself probably even in a buy position uh, in my league to have as basically as good a shot as statistically possible at taking home this thing. What I want to do is to safeguard this value and to preserve it for my future dynasty roster. 2025 first right now are a terrific place to put this. Oftentimes they're coming criminally undervalued by their current managers. They think that, you know, come 2025, they are going to have the best team whatsoever. It's always going to be the 112 in their mind, but lots happens. Nobody's that good that they can't predict year to year what that uh, first is going to look like. If you get really lucky, you know, it turns into that 101. It turns into the 103, 104. It turns into uh, another elite quarterback, maybe, for your roster down the road. They're, those are definite possibilities, and they're often criminally undervalued. 2025 first, often valued, you know, somewhere right now in between, uh, somewhere around 2 2024 20, seconds. In between 2 2024 20, seconds and a 2024 20, first is usually about what you'll find the value for a 2025 20, first right now. It's a really, really good asset to be inquiring about, to be trying to acquire, especially with those wide receiver threes. If somebody's looking to plug a hole in their lineup with a high-end RB2 or with a wide receiver three uh, that has a little bit of buzz right now, then these 2025 20, firsts, are really, really good, especially on these stack teams that we're talking about. Really, really good way to carry value, to insulate yourself for future years. There's still assets that can be used in season. They become a little bit more uh, a little bit more tangible once you get into the 2023 season and people are like, okay, yeah, so we've got 2024. You know, maybe they can't find those 2024 picks that this rebuilding team is looking to acquire. So they see that you have excess 2025 picks and they're coming to you for those 2025 picks. Um, that can be another way to use them even in this upcoming season, in season to gain some production if you need it. But all that to say, this is often a really good um, asset to acquire currently. Any first that's two years out right now, 2025 first. People will talk about uh, the time value of money. So this is a concept that basically says that um, future money is worth less than current money. Money in the bank uh, is worth less than money that will be in your bank in two years, essentially. Um, that is a true concept. It's like mathematically true in terms of finance. It is not a concept that I believe is true in dynasty fantasy football and the reason is that we are so incredibly inefficient in using our currency in dynasty um, as i talked about with these individual player bets that we're constantly making with our dynasty rosters like even at the best of times we're making um, a 70 percent bet that a player is going to be good this upcoming season and that they won't lose dynasty value um, 
this is the kind of currency that we're dealing with, right? Is dynasty value. Dynasty value yo-yos up and down and around constantly um, for many, many players, almost every player that's not an elite level player. And so I really reject the notion that there's some sort of time value of money that we're um, should be ascribing to 2025 first. I really don't think that's applicable when you have a currency that we're so inefficient at using already. Um, so in my mind, it's just such a major W to park dynasty value in these two year out first that are absolutely guaranteed to gain value uh, between now and then. Even if that's a 112 in 2025, it's still going to be worth more than than it is right now. You're guaranteeing value. You're also giving yourself a chance at a really, really huge payout down the road. If that first turns into that 101, 103, whatever the case may be, if it turns into a high end first, then you get a huge payout, huge return on your investment. And you're looking at having traded a wide receiver three for whoever the QB1 in uh, the 2025 draft turns out to be or whoever the wide receiver one in 2025 turns out to be. These are really good bets to make. Um, the, the dynasty value is not going anywhere, and there's also a bonus chance that it turns into a massive, massive win for your overall dynasty roster and dynasty value as a whole. So uh, get off my soapbox, but 2025 first, absolutely something you should be looking to acquire on those stack teams, especially uh, in this offseason. The second tier, I guess I would say, is those elite quarterbacks that I'm talking about. Definitely, you should be thinking about parking value in elite quarterbacks, especially on stacked teams. The scarcity of these elites is far bigger than most dynasty players realize. Uh, and the value over replacement of the elites versus the kind of run-of-the-mill quarterback twos that we get every single year. And I will say that quarterback twos emerge yearly. You can acquire them mid-season for seconds, a couple of seconds in a lot of places. Uh, whoever, you know, the, the person on the good offense is that year that is having a little bit of a breakout, but people still kind of don't believe it. You can go out and you can get that quarterback um, for a couple of seconds almost every year. It's very similar to acquiring RB2s, which we talk about a lot one of the easiest things to acquire every single year is an RB2 uh, down the stretch for a second um, in a lot of places. Very similar with these quarterbacks uh, for a couple seconds. Uh, you can buy yourself, you know, that QB16 production if you need it. But the difference between that QB16 and some of these, you know, say, or arbitrary, say QB10s or higher, is that the QB10s really do separate in terms of their production and in terms of sustaining dynasty value year to year. So that's why the elite quarterbacks are worth uh, quote-unquote overpaying for and why you have to. Um, I think that honestly, in a lot of cases, the probably not the absolute elite tier of um, quarterbacks, the guys that you know everybody's going to be drafting first, second, third overall in your dynasty startups, your super flex startups. Definitely those guys are probably you're going to have to overpay very significantly for them. But the guys behind that, the kind of second tier of the elite quarterbacks, a lot of those guys you can actually find a deal for. You just have to find the right manager in your league at the right time and find you know that player on your roster or that combination of picks on your roster that they're interested in. And you can park some value into elite quarterbacks. You can gain that production. You can gain a very safe asset overall. So definitely elite quarterbacks would be the second safest uh, asset in my mind to park dynasty value, especially on stacked teams. The third spot, uh, third tier, I guess you would say, are well-regarded rookie wide receivers. Uh, outside of, you know, absolutely true face plant seasons where they don't get any routes, they don't uh, get any snaps, they don't get any targets. Outside of true face plant situations, they really do hold value. You can see this across a number of years. Um, players who honestly barely got on the field and still have a ton of dynasty value this season. Um, there are lots of examples you can draw from this past season, the season before, but 
in general, uh, one of the safest bets you can make is these rookie wide receivers because if they have a great season and then they improve their value overall, they improve from, you know, whatever it is, a first value to a first plus a second uh, next off season. Um, but even if they are not great, then there's still going to be those people who had that evaluation of that player uh, that previous season and they thought he was great they didn't get him you got him uh, for whatever reason in your rookie draft or by trade but they're still in on that player even though their first season wasn't as terrific as we would have hoped and so you can probably get out for almost exactly what you paid for on the way in and so basically it's a it's a case where the floor is not that bad um, but there's actually some ceiling as well and so well-regarded rookie wide receivers are a really good place to park value on these stack teams as well and then the fourth uh, spot that you can look at is the elite and also young wide receivers I even when we get to this spot I start to have major caveats they have to be truly elite uh, otherwise uh, they will potentially lose significant value after one bad year for whatever reason you know quarterback gets hurt and suddenly the backup can't cut it and suddenly the offense is dead and they can't produce anymore whatever the case may be if they're not truly elite and viewed as such by the dynasty market then there is the potential that they could drop off significantly in value uh, and in a lot of cases, you won't get these uh, truly elite tier players unless you get unless you're willing to come through with an overpay. So unless they're already on your roster and you're just thinking about, you know, yeah, OK, this is a good player to keep on this roster and to keep um, my dynasty value in. Um, it's usually um, not a great place to invest in. Uh, but you can definitely go kick tires if you know you've already kicked tires on the first round picks on the elite quarterbacks on the well-regarded rookie wide receivers if you can't find those at good value and then definitely you can think about the elite and young wide receivers as a tier and that's definitely uh, a, a very possible and very usable situation where you can get into some of those players and park some of that excess value that otherwise would have been on your bench or otherwise would have been associated across multiple players and you could have seen some destruction of value in that way once you get beyond that tier uh, then honestly uh, everything starts to feel the same in terms of the safety in terms of um yeah how easily you can carry that value and not lose that value once you get into the season uh, a lot of things will happen a lot of things do happen every every year in the first couple of weeks and people's values change they like i said they may not change uh, on the website the dynasty rankings may not change but in terms of the trades that you're actually able to get done they absolutely will change after the first couple of weeks of the season and so really i think the focus here is to try to think actively like even if you disagree with what i'm saying here in terms of you know what the safest assets are if you disagree that 2025 first are a little bit of a cheat code in terms of saving value on stack teams if you disagree with any of that at least do yourself the favor of thinking about how you're carrying the value on your dynasty roster currently and how safe those assets truly are um you know each individual player's situation is different some players have uh, a lot more safety in their situation than others you know the quality of the backups behind them could this running back supplant this running back these kinds of things how likely are they to be that team that uh, signs one of these running backs these veteran running backs that are out there so all these things uh, you can take into consideration you can think about where the value on your roster is currently being carried and you can think about what you can do to safeguard that value through this off season to get yourself into the season and to make better evaluations with more data once we have those first two weeks of the season uh, under our belts and we have more data then you can make better decisions um, with your roster with more liquid currency you can decide more on the direction of that roster for that year. You can do all these things without sacrificing a ton of dynasty value.